When construction began on the Berlin Wall on August the 13th, 1961, Joachim Rudolf was in his early 20s, a student in East Berlin. Overnight, everything changed. In panic and desperation, Rudolf, like many others, decided to flee to the West. It could have cost him his life. Das haben wir uns dann in dem Moment erst klar gemacht. We talked about it over and over again and realized that we had no future here anymore. So we decided to flee. That was in late September 1961. And obviously we knew that people had been killed trying to escape and that it was a dangerous thing to do. But we believed it was worth the risk and we did it. The wall destroyed the young students' plans for the future. Trapped in communist East Germany without any prospects, he was determined to leave. Klaus Köppen lived in West Berlin. The Berlin Wall changed his life too. From one day to the next, he was no longer able to see his fiancée, who lived in the East. The wall tore the young couple apart. I couldn't believe what was happening and was worried because my fiancé lived down the road on the other side. To begin with, we thought it was some kind of exercise, that it wasn't there to stay. It was only later that we understood the implications. We didn't realize how serious it was. We thought it would all work out. We expected them to set up a border point so people could cross over. But it went from bad to worse, and we couldn't see one another. Joachim Rudolf made up his mind. He wanted to flee East Berlin. In September 1961, he and a friend made their way under cover of darkness across the border in the north of the city, passing watchtowers and armed border guards and their dogs. We have also then it took us about four hours from our starting point at the edge of the field before we reached the stream. When we crossed it, we didn't see a border fence. When we reached the west, we ran into a huge oak tree and collapsed into each other's arms. Klaus Köppen spent months trying to get a visa to visit his girlfriend in the east. Eventually, he was allowed to enter East Berlin and spend a few hours with her. Starting in January 1962, I went to see her every Sunday and sometimes during the week as well. I brought her things like imported fruit and clothes because they couldn't buy anything nice over there. Our daughter was born in 1964, and then I went over even more often so that I could see her. The Berlin Wall was there to stay, but people were determined to escape to the West. Now in West Berlin, Joachim Rudolf was one of the first to start building a tunnel underneath Bernauerstrasse. It enabled 29 people to escape from East Berlin, as this documentary footage shows. Evelina and her one-year-old daughter were among them. Later, she married Joachim Rudolf, and they made their home in West Berlin. If it hadn't been for the wall and the tunnel, I don't know how fate would have intervened to ensure I met my husband. I really believe that, that there's such a thing as fate, and we were meant to meet, one way or another, and how. Klaus Köppen did everything he could to get his girlfriend and their daughter out of East Berlin. In 1965, they were allowed to leave and enjoy a newfound freedom. We could finally say what we wanted to. We could argue and speak openly about what we thought. Today, this memorial site on Bernauer Strasse in the heart of Berlin is a reminder of the wall that divided the city. 
For many people, its memory remains vivid 20 years on.